Hi as well, welcome back to the shop. And someone asked in the Q&A, have I ever come up with an idea? And yes I did, and I will explain that there's a couple of ideas that I've got um, to submit to the patent office at the moment. But, I said, you know, I can't talk about them, blah 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 blah. But then I said, well yes, there is a, an idea that I am willing to talk about because yeah, it is a stupid idea. But it was when I was a young engineer. Starting out and what have you. So what I came up with is was this, which I called the Gavel engine. Um, so Gavel is them hammers, I'll probably put a picture up just for the laugh. Is a hammer that the judge has, bang bang bang. And the reason why I called it that was because of the piston. So this weird looking thing here is the piston. And the whole point of this idea was to not waste the travel of the piston. So obviously in a two-stroke, and this is a two-stroke design, you've got bang and the piston is pushed down and then it's got to come back up and that's wasted travel. Um, so it goes down, oops I finished it, it goes down and then it's got to come back up and it's a wasted stroke. So in a sense I, I used to joke and call this the one stroke. Um, it's not a one stroke, but there's a power there's a power stroke every stroke, just with the same piston. So how does this work? Probably not that well. <laughs> That's how it works. But uh, I'll show you some of my really old CAD designs and all the rest of it from back in the day. I'll put some pictures up now, uh, just to make it a lot easier to understand. I'll show you some other pictures because this drawing uh, doesn't really do a good job. But well, basically all you have is you have this piston and this piston, and I'll show you a, a picture of that now. This piston has obviously two crowns, this midsection has a hole in the middle, and uh, the hole is just for lightness and cooling. And basically what happens is the piston here comes down, and as it comes down, this is all wrong is this picture, I was just trying to get the basics out. What we have is we have a rod going through the piston, so that means that the cylinder see what I'm doing here. The cylinder has to have a slot in it. The cylinder also has ports in it um, that go here somewhere like this. Like I say, the, the CAD drawings show it better. Um, uh, top and bottom. So the whole th thing's symmetrical. And basically what happens is, is that you compress, you go bang, it pushes the piston, it goes bang, it goes bang, it goes bang, it goes bang. Because there's no crankcase breathing for this, you'd have to use a mechanical supercharger, which you can see from the uh, really crude CAD designs back in the day and the way this works is you have a rod going through the entire thing and this is one of its weaknesses how much that flex how stiff you have to make that the rod that comes out of you know so you have a rod coming out like this that attaches to the piston um, and as this goes up and down it sits on these rods here and these rods are crosshead bearings so they have bearings inside in sleeves so this takes out any slap of the system, it's just a linear motion. And then on the, on the end of the rods you've got something quite similar, uh, typical, which is just two con rods um, powering a crank. Now, in a sense, one of the good things about this design is you're still keeping with the ethos, in a sense, of your two-stroke engine. So it is a two-stroke, it has the same kind of things apart from you, you'd use direct injection with this or something like that, you could use regular injection with a supercharger and all the rest of it. One of the neat things in a sense is how the engine breathes. So the supercharger is constantly uh, working because the engine's constantly ticking over. Now the supercharger isn't there to actually charge the engine uh, in a supercharging way like above atmospheric pressure. It's actually there because we're not using the crankcase at all it's actually there just to um, keep the flow moving. So what happens is, is when the piston um, goes to top dead centre, that uncovers the transfer ports from the supercharger below the piston. So in this drawing here, your ports would be here. And air from the supercharger that it's drawing through would then go under the bottom of the piston and straight out the exhaust ports. And the reason why you do this is because one you get good flow so you go through the cylinder and back out because this is in the way um, you go through the cylinder cool the piston and then go out the exhaust port it also help evacuate any exhaust gases that are in the exhaust system 
it would also lower the pressure of the exhaust system, stuff like that, um, which would help with scavenging. Um, the other thing is, as well, is obviously when you come down to here, you open up your ports, like so, like this. So this fuel and air mixture can then travel into the cylinder. It does require direct injection and spark plugs. It does get a bit iffy down here with you start to run out of room. Um, but you could start to use the crankcase section. So you might look at this and go, well, hang about, there's some serious complexity here. And I totally believe, you know, I'm totally with you there. Um, the piston would weigh the same as two pistons. In a sense, in a way. So you can kind of say this system's close. This actual bar... The piston bar, the wrist pin, uh, would be an, a, an additional weight. It'd be a lot heavier than um, pistons, uh, normal wrist pins. Your crosshead bearing section, that's an addition. That's an additional part. It's also a, you know, an additional bearing to include. However, you would also, your cylinders would last longer because of one, the cooling. Your pistons would probably last longer because of the cooling effect. Um, Number three is you don't get any piston slap. This is very linear because you're taking out the slap with your crosshead bearing section. Um, your crankshaft, as you can see, could be completely sealed from all of this. So you could have a four-stroke crankshaft system where basically it's just a little oil pump that pressurises the oil in all this. Um, you could optimise this and you could probably make it so your cylinder actually fits with your head, your injector and stuff, could actually fit in here. So you could actually make the thing really quite compact um, you could do a V engine, which is, as you see, most of the examples that I've done are a V engine. I did some of the calculations and worked out this would work a hell of a lot better if it was a V engine, because then you could have two pins on your crankshaft, so you've got a share crankshaft, so you're saving weight. And because it's a V engine, you'd actually get a power stroke every four, uh, every 90 degrees just with two cylinders. So you've got two cylinders. In a sense, it's like this is like the Opoc engine, but turned inside out where instead of having two pistons come together, you just have one piston that then gets fired either way. So it's kind of a blend of steam engine stuff and two-stroke diesels with your um, crosshead bearings and stuff like that. It's also trying to use the Opoc engine, but just in a different way, or like the Atkins cycle or something like that. It's basically a big blend of all, all three of them in a two-stroke setup where your reliability is more like a four-stroke. However, there are issues with this design, a lot of them complexity. Trying to fabricate all these parts isn't too much. It's, uh, I, didn't, I never did a failure analysis on any of this stuff. Or a tolerance analysis or anything shit like that. Um, but one of the other uh, issues with this engine is uh, heat soaking would be a problem because this, this cylinder's out at the top so it could lose a lot of heat. This system, this cylinder is actually buried, so there would be a bit of a temperature gradient between the two sides. Obviously, you have to use a supercharger to make the whole thing work. Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to think what else was the problem. Oh yeah, that's it. The main problem I had with this was the oiling system. So I want to get rid of the oiling issue with a two-stroke. The problem is, is you think, oh, it's great because you could keep oil between the section because this is like a four-stroke. This is all you need. The problem is, is supplying enough oil to the top and not uh, not over flooding the bottom because there's gravity. One piston is going to have a lot more oil than the other one. You could try and work out a system, but the problem is, as soon as you put ports in, that means that the uh, incoming flow is going to push some of this oil into the intake system, which might not be the end of the world. Um, if I actually did the maths, I'd probably work out that this actually burns less oil even if it did burn the oil in this midsection now and then because of this porting. One of the big problems with this is that your ports, if I draw that, uh, one of the problems with using ports in general, and it's one of the problems that the um, Wankel has, is that you have your cylinder and then you have a port. And if you've got wiper rings or just normal compression rings, what they will do is as they travel down, they will deposit oil inside the port and for this it would be both the exhaust and the um, it'd be the exhaust port and the inlet port and obviously you'd start to burn oil. It'd probably be very similar to the um, Wankel but uh, you know it's not very good. If I could think of some way of uh, oiling this cylinder I did think it might be a possibility to put it between the two rings. So you've got one ring here, 
and they're both white rings and you just oil in here maybe possibly like a four stroke but it'd be controlling that and you've got your ring gap and blah 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 so it was i thought it was a brilliant idea at the time i thought yes this is absolutely fantastic um but yeah there are a lot of issues with it one day i will build this engine so when i move out of here and get my proper workshop back and get my milling machine and my casting stuff and all the rest of it going we will build this engine just for the shits and giggles of it and see how much power this thing can produce because a power stroke from two cylinders even though in a sense it's cheating it's four but for a small compact package um, it should be quite powerful but yeah there are some problems that I wasn't very happy with so I'll leave you with some pictures at the end of this, just like a little slideshow of the stuff that I did get together at the time. And uh, that's that design. Tell me what you think, tell me what the problems are. Other problems that I didn't mention, there's probably loads. Um, but that is a design that I I will share with you. I could patent this and all this, but I just thought, you know, no one's ever going to bloody make it. Because like I say, two strokes are on the decline. This really doesn't help it. And it actually costs quite a lot of money. Um, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, loading issues that I didn't think about, you know, like this actual bar, I didn't do any kind of uh, working out for that or anything. But uh, yeah, that's the system, and uh, tell me what you think, and I'll see you in a bit.